welcome to Enots Engineering, I'm Alan. In this video we're having a year in the workshop where we look at all the things we made in the past year in a short clip of each. So let's go into the workshop and see what we did. It's gone right through. the boring bar kit. We have three boring bars fitted in the blocks and three thread cutting bars. So what I want to do is mill a flat surface down here about a half inch wide just to give me a guidance for a dial indicator to run along. So now I can run a dial indicator over the top of each and get this level to the dovetail. 12 millimeter end mill. The milling cutters just touching on each end, so that shows that when the casting was originally machined, it was set true to the raw casting. Now there I have a nice flat surface. So now I have a face this side and the other side where I can run a dial indicator along to get the angle of the compound slide. Just press that. So select the X and Y for the lathe, press enter. Just use the keypad to enter the number, press enter. We'll then move along the bed to the other end in the X direction and then move in in the Y direction till the dial indicator read zero. Press down there, it should say move X. Move along and come in to reset your dial indicator to zero. Press Y. Now it says I am so I'm left just about a tenth out on the angle and that's a tenth of a thou over about four or five inches. I'm using WD-40 to stop the aluminium sticking to the tool. It's important that you check that your vice jaw is parallel to the table. And what I want to do is drill two holes along that line for the sign bar datums. And then drill another four holes in here to hold the magnets. The same again on the other hole. And I want to drill four holes on the base for the magnets. And that will give me a flat bottom hole. Now that's the aluminium finish with. On this side I have two holes for the sign bar locations and four holes for magnets. This side you can't see much. On this side four magnets hidden under this and the two centres and that fits on the top of the compound slide the magnets hold it on and then depending on your angle you put gauge blocks under either this end or under this end depending on which way you want to go. Let's clean the face up now I'll carry on working on the diameter. I'll just put a recess there just to make it look nice. But the next job is to put the semicircles around the handle. And we select this symbol here, which is pitch circle with holes round. Yeah. 
that's the handle finished and that screws into the back of the collet floating reamer holder well, in this one my reamer has a parallel diameter so I'm holding it in a small chuck which is fitted into the end on a Morse taper so if I hold this look I can move the reamer around and start the speed slow and I'm not going full depth I'm only going halfway into that ball guide it in and then just go in 10 millimeters Withdraw it, hold the reamer again, take it out. This diameter is running true at the moment, so I'll part this off, turn it round, put it in the chuck, get it running about a sixth hour out, and then do the same again on the other side and see if that hole is bigger. Start it slow, guide it into the bore, and take it in. 10 mil and it's a 10 mil take that out it's a couple of tenths different than the other bore but like that could be me with the measuring so bore size I'm going to say it's the same Still running out six now. So that reamer cut a hole that was just a couple of tenths maybe bigger than a hole running through. I was expecting that hole to be a couple or three thou at least bigger due to the run out on the outside and the bore. So it allowed the reamer to follow the bore and not cut more off one side of the bore than the other. I'll try the base on this one that fits in and it moves around okay. Put the nuts on. Just drops into here. Just check how much it's ground off. I note the position here, which is on zero. Bring the drill out. It's two turns. Slacken the clamp off. And reposition the drill now on the other flute. Open the clamp up. Bring round to zero again. Just see there the, the four facets. I don't know whether I can turn it to get the light to reflect. There's the one. There's the other. It's finished. And finally the two grub screws. Just a tip, when you finish turning the end, just put the die on them to make sure you've, you haven't damaged your thread. Because if you screw that into the aluminium and it's a damaged thread, you could damage the thread in the aluminium quite easily. There it is fitting to the motor. No vibration. I'll clean the back in with some brake and clutch cleaner. And then when that dried, Peel the adhesive off the back and it just sticks on easy. This is a piece of old girder that's been cut off and you can see it's still got the coating on the end. So what I'll do is feed this into the sanding disc and see how it copes. Ah. 
and as you can see the end there you've squared that off quite quickly Now that's the type of finish you'll get with that grit. And remember this is an 80 grit, so if we get a finer grit, should get even finer finish. That's my job done. Clamp this up so the, the carriage now won't move in and any adjustments made by adjusting the tool here. Using the screw on the end push the tool forward till it touches the wheel. That's ready for grinding. Screw on the end, turn that and it pushes the tool forward to grind more off. Picture you can see the radius there, it's slightly to one side, and that's because the original ground sides of the tool were not central. That's the radius table completed. Just press that down. Insert the rod with the dome touching the end and insert the, the grub screw. Now as I tighten the grub screw up, pushes the rod and it should clamp up on the dial indicator. Just turn it a quarter of a turn and that's tighter. I don't need it any tighter than that. So with the chuck jaws I can get a bit closer to the chuck. Now if I just slacken it off, turn the dial indicator sideways, I can still see the dial indicator from the side and I can bring it a lot closer to the chuck, which I couldn't do before because this would have hit the jaws. There's a better view of the indexing plate that's fixed. These three screws hold it in. And that has 24 positions. So if you can divide the number of flats or holes that you need into 24, you can use the indexing plate. Obviously, this is a handle to turn the dividing head, and 40 turns will give you one revolution. So if you can divide the number of divisions you want into 40, Say so if it was 40 flats, you just turn it once. 20 flats, you turn it twice. What if there's an odd number, you can't divide it? That's where these plates come in. If you look at the table, if you wanted to do nine divisions, I was telling you to use an 18 hole plate, and you do four full turns and eight holes on an 18 hole plate. This goes from one division all the way up to 370 divisions. Release the brake adjuster by putting a screwdriver through the stud hole and with the drum removed you can see what you're trying to do is lift this lever up, have a leading edge which is this edge which is close to the steel and a trailing edge which is this edge where the lining finishes well before the end. So just make sure they fit on the right way. You have that on each shoe. There are stores with all the tools you could need for your home workshop. It would be hard to tell if this was a full-sized engine or a model. The 
was a large selection of models on display from Stuart Turner. A good chance to spot the details that have changed on other people's models. There's the parts reassembled and immediately you can see the difference with the black treated and the non-treated. So I'm interested now to see whether the non-treated piece will go rusty after time or whether these will stay nice and black like that. I've fitted all the inserts in the holders and now I'm just laying them out in order. So we have a parting off tool turning tool for facing and turning the OD another one just a different shape tip so you can get into a sharper corner different angle and then a straight one I sometimes use this for chamfers then you've got your external thread cutting tool your internal thread cutting tool and a standard boring tool Okay, I've fitted the vise to the milling machine table. I've put the tenons in the slot underneath the vise and it's fitted. This vise has a drain all the way around here, there's like a, a gutter. So when you're using coolant, instead of coming down the back and dripping down, if you have it on this end overlapping, instead of dripping down all over your machine, it will divert the coolant round and come out the side here so it goes into the T-slots and it will also stop it running over the front of the machine and that's on both sides so that's a nice little uh, design feature the main problem is when I close the doors it grips at this end and this end I've got a gap Seventh thou goes in and it stops about half inch in. But it also goes in this end as well, seventh thou. So it looks as if the jaws were not only out of line but also bowed. So that's the best I can get that. So now we have a piece of wood it just slides on top of the drawer and that should go the drawer still shuts so it goes inside could have been a bit smaller 12 and a half mil I'll drill about half a mil over the sizes and I can take that out, it's not gripping. Cut it on and I've drilled if this one's I think it's a three mil end mill. If you drill it three mil, you'll still have to open it up to four mil. That fits in there. And I can push it to the back out the way if I need to get something at the bottom of the drawer. Or I can leave it at the front. And that's the finished item. That's holding end mills and counterbores for cap head screws. Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was useful. Hope it was interesting. And we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering. <laughs> <laughs>